Now let's talk a little bit about how we hang um, lighting fixtures. Um, and there will be a practical exercise where you'll all get to practice this several times. Um, but let's, uh, let's go through it here, right? So um, we discussed the C-clamps and the merits and parts of the C-clamp, right? And so when you approach a pipe, what you want to do is just simply put the C-clamp over the top of the pipe, right? And more often than not, I will tell you to have the clamp open towards you simply because it's easier to um, operate with the clamp facing you. If we're hanging an entire row of lights, I would suggest that all of the clamps face the same direction. That way when we go to take it down, we don't have to go from one side of the pipe to the other side of the pipe. Consistency is good. Once you get the clamp over the top of the pipe, what you want to do is just use your fingers to tighten the pipe bolt or the clamp bolt right to snug the C clamp against the pipe. Now in the process of taking the light from the ground up to the pipe you want to go ahead and make sure that you're in control of that light all the time. So you'll never take your hand off of that light. And under this is one of the more dangerous times where uh, that we are uh, working in because we're working with loose equipment that could be over top of someone's head or really high up off the ground and what we want to do is make sure that we're in control of this light all the time so from the time that you place the uh, clamp over the top of the pipe to the time that you get this finger tight and locked down you never want to take your hand off of off of the fixture you then take your wrench from your pocket and then tighten down this bolt until it is until it is tight against this pipe and locked into place. At that point then you can trust for a few minutes that this um, fixture is safe and attached to the pipe. Then you're going to want to take the safety cable and wrap the safety cable around the pipe. The diagram's a little off, but you want to go um, between the yoke and then over the pipe. Some fixtures may have an attachment point on the fixture and at that point you would go over the pipe and back to the fixture. But the next thing you do after you get the, um, um, the fixture clamp tight is to go ahead and attach the safety. And that way we're sure that this equipment is not going to fall or come loose. Now we want to deal with um, you know, focusing and and getting power to it and getting it ready so that it can be used in a show. So I have a row of lights that are hung here and stage light, the common um, distance between stage light is uh, 18 inches or one foot six. And a good rule of thumb for one foot six is typically the distance from your elbow to the tip of your um, longest finger, right? That, you'll find that that's close to 18 inches. Now, you may want to be more specific than that and actually measure it. Sometimes pipes will have marks on them that are at 18 inch intervals so that you know where you need to hang the light. But 18 inches or one foot six is a typical spacing. The next thing that we're going to want to do is our power cord was wrapped up and stored around the yoke as it should be. And what you'll want to do is go ahead and unwrap that power cord and just let it hang straight down. The next thing we're going to want to do is to make sure that the shutters, especially on an ERS or specifically on an ERS, that those shutters are pulled. We push them in when we remove a light so that we protect them from damage. But once we hang them, if you leave them in, no light comes out the front and we'll often have uh, difficulty knowing whether or not the light is working correctly as we're testing all of the lights. So make sure that you pull the shutters so that we can um, later on that we can test them and that light will actually come out the front once we energize the lamp. Now, most light plots will have a direction that the light should um, be pointed whether that's across the stage or downstage or upstage. And what we want to do is roughly align the fixture to where we think it might focus. This is not a precise thing. We just want to sort of roughly point them where we want them. <laughs> and you'll do that by pivoting the fixture um, through the C-clamp, right, to pan the light left to right. 
And to tilt, you would loosen this little plastic handle on the side, tilt the fixture into place, and then retighten that little plastic handle. We never want to force the tilt because you can damage the locking mechanism. You're going to want to loosen it, move it, and then tighten it. The same thing can be applied at the C-clamp. You want to loosen it, move it, and then tighten it. Now, as you're rough focusing, it's important to realize that the fixture has an orientation. It has a top and a bottom. And the way to tell the top from the bottom is going to be that the gel frame clip, this little clip on the front that holds the frame in the front, is going to be on the top. And the power tail will come out the bottom. The clip on the top, power out the bottom. And that fixture now is right side up. If you hang it the other direction, there's a potential that the gel frame or any accessory on the front could fall out, as well as gobos. <clears throat> gobos go back here in this slot, and they don't have a clip to hold them in. And if the fixture is installed upside down, right, with the power coming out the top, then that gobo could possibly fall, and we don't want anything like that to happen. So just remember, the power cord comes out the bottom, gel clip on the top. Now, let's talk a little bit about cabling. <clears throat> when you're cabling, what we want to do is run the power from the dimmer or the circuit or the output towards the fixture. We want to leave any extra cable at the fixture. The, the circuit will never move. We're never going to move where that circuit comes out of the wall. But a designer may need to move a light a few inches this way or even several feet. And if we keep the extra cable at the fixture, then it's easier for us to be able to loosen that cable and move it to where we need it. And then we don't even need to get an extension, right? So let's keep the extra cable at the fixture, right? So these connectors want to tie as, cl uh, you know, as close to the C-clamp as possible, typically not more than 9 or 12 inches from the clamp. So what I want to do is I want to have this um, um, pin connector tie up as close as possible to the C-clamp, right? So again, 9 to 12 inches. And what that gives me is a focus loop. This light is going to be able to pivot and twist and turn and do whatever it needs to do, right, with the slack that's provided by the power cord. If you tie it much further away than that, if you start to get 18 inches or 2 feet away, then the power cord is stretched to get to um, uh, the plug. And if you, as soon as you try and move the light wherever you need it, it becomes unplugged. And then it's uh, a challenge. You're up in the air, you're working on the dark, and you're trying to figure out why your light just went out. Right? So um, you want to keep that connector. Now, what do you do with the extra cable? As we learned in electricity, and remember our extension cord that was wrapped up, we want to avoid making a coil of cable on the pipe. <clears throat> it creates all kinds of bad electrical interference, and it's just bad practice to have energized cable stored in a coil. So what is the best way to store cable on a pipe, and the neatest way to do it, is if your cable is too long and runs past where you need it to be, just go ahead and bend it and double it back and you can place that connector exactly where you want it, right? Right you know, within 9 to 12 inches of this clamp. Go down the pipe, past the fixture, and then double it back to where you want it rather than making a coil right here at the fixture, right? To tie up cable, we use tie line, little pieces of, of, of black string, basically. And if you'll double wrap, if you'll wrap twice around the pipe and the cable, right, then you can control all of the cable and you finish that with a bow knot, just like you're tying your shoes. Do not tie two overhand knots or square knots. Bow knots are perfect. You have to remember that we're not doing permanent installations. These are temporary, and we want to be able to take it down relatively easy. However, we also want it to be secure for the duration. So double wrap around the pipe and the wire. Finish it with a bow knot just like you were tying your shoes. And that's it for um, hanging and circuiting.